come an annual rite of spring training for the Chicago Cubs. Big league weekend here at Cashman Field in Las Vegas. The Cubs with two games against the New York Mets before they head to Anaheim to start the season. And spring training baseball is presented by Canals Auto Park. And great to have you with us. Gorgeous night for baseball. Jim Deshays and Len Casper. This is a rematch of last year's NLCS, although it is still spring training. But let's take a look at some numbers in terms of guys who've had really good camps. Uh, yeah, we're going to focus on three guys, and three guys obviously will play very big roles for the Cubs this season. Addison Russell, the power bat, has really come along for Russell here lately. Anthony Rizzo is having a very good spring. Russell early on, a couple of home runs. Then he went quiet lately, though he's been hitting the ball out of the ballpark. We had a chat about him the other day trying to project his home run total, 15, 20. At some point in his career, I wouldn't be surprised to see him be a 25, 30 home run guy. Rizzo has had a hot bat. John Lester, how about the day he had yesterday? Punched out 10 in five innings. And he hit a home run. Nobody does that. Not even Wayne Newton or Carrot Top. And we will not talk with either of those two guys here tonight uh, unless they show up and we'll just put them on the air. But we will chat with Joe Madden and uh, the key here is just get through this weekend healthy. Yeah, have a little fun. Uh, you know, we're playing the Mets. So it'll be fun to talk about last year. Obviously, the intensity won't be the same as the postseason. Uh, but yeah, Joe, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. He's excited, ready to get going. And we'll chat with him about that in the third inning here tonight. All right, it's prospects on the mound. Ryan Williams for the Cubs. Paul Seawald for the Mets. Mets and Cubs, big league weekend. And kicks off next here on CSN. <laughs>beautiful day we're actually starting this game just after five o'clock local time so still a lot of sunshine on the field and they're expecting a packed house the Mets AAA affiliate is the Las Vegas 51s and this is their home ballpark but as we know JD there are a lot of Cub fans here in the ballpark tonight as always. Oh yeah, Cubs uh, everywhere they go this spring have been drawing huge crowds set another record in terms of home attendance uh, for all of spring training back to back years they've done that and they've drawn the sell out crowds everywhere they've gone and there's a ton of Cub fans here again this evening. So two here against the Mets and then one more exhibition game on Sunday against the Angels There's Terry Collins who led his team to a National League pennant last season. He and Joe Madden go way back to their Angels days. What a weird season series last year. The Cubs swept the Mets 7 0 in the regular season, and then the Mets turned the table on the Cubs 4 0 in the NLCS. And that pretty much tells the story of the Mets season last year, too, because when we saw them well, it was late June, July, um, they were just run out of good club. They were second to last in the National League and run score the first half and led the league and run scored in the second half a complete reversal in terms of their offensive production.
Paul Seawald, a right-hander who's from Las Vegas, will start for the Mets, and this is the Cubs lineup he will face. Switch hitting Ben Zobris at the top. Jason Hayward not hitting for average, but he is hitting for power this spring. Another Las Vegas native, Chris Bryant. You see what he did last year here in his quote home ballpark. Anthony Rizzo will clean up at first. Kyle Schwarber in left batting fifth. Was Stella Russell and Ross and then Ryan Williams he'll start the year in the minor leagues but a prospect the Cubs are excited about as well. Mets defensively set up this way uh, Michael Conforto the youngsters out and left big arm in center field with uh, Cespedes Curtis Granderson will patrol right field they got a new look in the middle of the diamond there with as uh, Drupal Cabrera and Neil Walker joining this ball club the corners are manned by David Wright. And Lucas Duda, Kevin Plawecki will do the catching for the Mets tonight. And as Len mentioned, Paul Seawald, uh, who was a teammate of Chris Bryant's in Little League and again in college at the University of San Diego, will make his first start since college. He's been a relief pitcher throughout his minor league career. But a local guy getting a chance to make this start here tonight. He was third in the Eastern League with 24 saves last year at Double A Binghamton. Actually, is uh, we just found out not right because uh, that's Doug Eddings behind the plate. I think Dana is out at third. Does that look right to you? Um, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Kind of looks. So I think we've got the four umpires right. We just had to move them around a little bit. So Seawald to Zobrist. And a strike on a sinking fastball to get us started. It'll be handled by Neil Walker. Hard to see him in any uniform other than Hans. He was signed in the offseason. Daniel Murphy. He's now a Washington National. Hayward. Nice hand for Jason Hayward. He's playing center tonight. Dexter Fowler is fine with that left side tightness. Just for the regular season, he probably wouldn't have even come out of the game the other day. Outside for ball one, one and one. Well, the uh, scouting report on Seawald is uh, more of a finesse type guy, doesn't throw real hard, tries to pound the bottom of the zone with sinking fastballs. Jacob DeGrom was supposed to pitch, but uh, he and his wife are expecting a baby any day now, so he decided to stay back in Florida. Two and two on Hayward. The guy on deck, Chris Bryant, I'm sure excited to face Seawald, and we'll tell you why when he comes up. Off the plate inside, three and two. Strike three, and that will set up a matchup of former Little League and college teammates. Both grew up in Las Vegas and later for a time were together at the University of San Diego. Yeah, sharing a moment there, Chris, with a big smile out towards Seawald, who's a couple years ahead of Chris in college for the uh, Toreros, right? USD. Fly ball pretty well hit left center and caught run down by Cespedes. So I guess both guys can feel good about that at bat. Bryant hit it well. Seawald got him out and the Mets are coming up when we return.
How much does spring training mean? Well, probably not much. And these two teams hoping that is definitely the case. Cubs seven under in the Cactus League. The Mets have not won in 13 consecutive games. A lot of their regulars in the lineup. Granderson, Wright, Cespedes, Duda, Walker, Conforto, Cabrera, Pawecki, and it'll be Travis Darno as the number one starter back of the plate, and Seawald, the pitcher. Here's how the Cubs line up this evening. Kyle Schwarber is going to be the left fielder. Jason Hayward is in center. Chris Bryant with an appearance in right. Third to first, Tommy LaStella, Addison Russell, Ben Zobrist, Anthony Rizzo, Grandpa Ross behind the plate. The 24-year-old right-hander Ryan Williams. Oh boy, he had a heck of a year last year. He was the Cubs minor league pitcher of the year, and there are the numbers to support at 14 and 3 with a 2-1-6 in low A and then double A. A strike thrower, sinker, a lot of ground ball outs. He allowed just two home runs last year. Chicago native Curtis Granderson down in the count 0 and 2. So it would have been John Lackey and Jacob DeGrom. DeGrom stayed in Florida. Lackey pitched today in Arizona. One and two. on the ground right into the shift that's Lestella the third baseman to make the play that would be five claw four to three it's a good crossword word claw Q U A in the, in the uh, or words of friends like in, in the roll off or... I'll remember that here's David Wright they uh they backed off on him, pun intended. He did not get into any Grapefruit League games until the middle of March as he deals with chronic back issues. Chatting with his manager before the game, Terry Collins, he said he, he's been really good about telling the Mets to this point when he might need a day. And they'll try to be on top of it as the season moves along. You talked about the Mets' poor record this spring. They, like the Cubs, you know, started their starting pitchers a little more slowly than normally. Russell throws out right. The headline in the New York Post I saw online today said that the Mets have been putrid this spring. Yeah, they haven't been very good. 7 16 and 5. Cubs 10 17 and 2. Nobody seems to be. Worried. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no, no correlation between spring training one loss record and regular season one loss record. Now, if you feel like guys are out of shape and not ready to answer the bell, that, that's a separate issue. But wins and losses, not so much. They've had five ties. There's Cespedes. Huge year last year, big part of the Mets playoff run he combined for 35 homers 42 doubles between the Tigers and the Mets and he ended up re-signing to a three year 75 million dollar deal although he can opt out after just one season I mean he really went off when he first joined the Mets and people started talking about Cespedes as a potential MVP in the National League well tipped Williams like a seawall of the Mets similar approach a lot of strikes good movement down around the knees this is a breaking pitch work quickly can elevate here Williams a 10th round pick in 2014 out of East Carolina 14 and 3 last year with a 2.16 combined two years in the minor league 16 and 4 with a 2.03 earned run average. From Morgan Hill, California. He works the uh, far first base side of the rubber. the other way for the first hit of the ball game so Cespedes 
is aboard. That's a good pitch to sinker on or off the outside corner down below the knees. I'll bring up Lucas Duda. Knocked in six runs in the NLCS, five of which came in the clincher game four at Wrigley Field. Play. Fair amount of foul territory behind the bases here, corner bases, and we've got the high walls in the outfield. It's only 328 down the lines, but 433 to center. Wind blowing out right now toward right center. I was told yesterday they had 40 mile an hour winds here. That would have been yeah, fun. That would have been fun. Boy, in the, in the summertime here with the winds blowing out, it's hot and dry. The ball just jumps. So many talented first basemen in the National League. Dude is not among the elite, but he's a good solid run producer. 27 home runs last year after hitting 30 the year before. Zobrist was way out there, and Bryant will take it from him. But as deep as you'll see a second baseman play. Nothing, nothing after an inning from Vegas. Cup fans, let's go. Following the postseason run and an impressive offseason, there's tremendous excitement leading up to the Wrigley Field home openers. Show your support of Cubs baseball from the beginning. April and May offer fans the best availability to get the seats you want. Get your tickets now at Cubs.com. Steven Matz and Jason Hamill will. Pitch tomorrow. The Cubs will be the home team. They're the visitors today. Say cheese. Here's Anthony Rizzo. Talked about him in the open. It's a solid spring. Walker. Four up, four down for Seawald, and now Kyle Schwarber. Well, whenever we come here, we always like to go down memory lane. You were a Las Vegas star back in the day. Yeah, summer of 1992. Did you enjoy your time here? 
Uh, yeah, I did. It was uh, it was a fun group of guys. I mean, it's never fun to go back to the minor leagues after been in the big leagues for a while. But I spent half a season here, a couple months anyway. Good group of guys. Jimmy Ruggleman was the manager, and then he ended up being the Padre manager towards the end of that year when they let Greg Riddock go. Here's a 1 1 in Schwarber, and it's a strike. Big story uh, around the Mets this week was uh, Matt Harvey. Story came out originally that he had a non baseball health issue. And then after that happened, it came out that he was fine. He had a blood clot in his bladder. I guess he had an infection. Doctors cleared him. He's going to be just fine. But uh, as you can imagine, the tabloids in New York had yeah had lot. some fun with it. He was not too pleased. Said it was a pretty serious situation there for about a day or so. Swing and a miss for strike three. Yeah, but in defense of the, of the headline writers, I think most of the snark came out after they knew he was okay. But. Yeah. <laughs> Talked about Seawald not being a power guy, but he slipped that fastball by Schwarber, who's maybe a little late getting started there. Yeah, I understand both sides. And imagine, you know, Harvey was was pretty scared at first about what it could have been. And you like the fact that he was pretty upfront about what it actually was, but then when you're honest about it. Right. It splashed yeah. all over the headlines. Yeah. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> See, I walked right into that and I didn't even realize it. One and one on La Stella. But the bottom line is he's okay. And the Mets are very happy about that. I drive to center. Again, it's 433 in that area. And La Stella around second. He's going to stop there with a double ball that probably is a home run in just about any other ballpark. Yeah, he really gives this one a full treatment. Stayed back on that breaking pitch and absolutely crushes it. Suspicious plays a very shallow center fielder. At least it looks shallow in this big ballpark. And one hop off the wall. No need to push for three there with two outs. Here's Russell. He seems to be poised for a big sophomore season. is filling up quickly. In the dirt, three balls, no strikes. So Wall didn't want to give in there with a cripple fastball on 2 and 0. Oh, he's got an open base. See if he can get uh, Russell to chase. He almost did. Green light him right here. Even if it weren't spring training, I'd green light him. Borderline strike one. Mr. Met gets a prominent place in the Met spring training yes. attire. And he walked him. So Ernie Banks is Mr. Cub. Speaking of Mr. Met, so who's Mr. Met? In the history of the New York Mets, would you say? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, younger fans would probably say David Wright. That was my first thought. People of a certain age might argue Ed Cranepool, who was there right. forever.
David Ross stinging the ball. He went three for three against the Rockies yesterday. All three hits were doubles the day before he hit a home run. Tom Siva. Tom Siva was another I was thinking of, yeah. Chico Escuela had a nice run there. One and one on Ross. Ross had a big day yesterday. Swinging well lately. Two down, top of the second. Tough pitch. Well, has good command of that slider, slurvy breaking ball. Starts it on the plate and just runs it off the outside edge. Catches David Leaning here. Gun set up to try to bust him in. We'll see if they do it. This is just a really good pitch. Strike oh, yeah. to ball. Right starts on the plate and just dives right off the outside corner. Almost impossible pitch to take. With two strikes. Yeah. Two and two. A little of that two strike anxiety. You don't want to get caught looking. We got him that time. His third strikeout here in the first two innings. Nothing, nothing. Clark's crew is the official kids club of the Chicago Cubs team up with Clark as a member of Clark's crew and receive kids specific perks experiences and merchandise visit cubs.com slash kids to sign up your young Cubs so they can be part of the fun all season long. Uh, you have uh, opened up kind of a fun conversation about Mr. Met. You know, we're getting uh, some Mike Piazza votes on Twitter. Talk with that guy in the next uh, half inning, Joe Matt. Getting any Rod Gaspar? <laughs> Switch hitting Neil Walker from his better side, especially in terms of the power. 
Daniel Murphy, the postseason hero, is now Washington National. Signed a three-year deal with the Nets as a free agent. Nets have added Walker as Drupal Cabrera to play short. Wilmer Flores becomes a backup. Ruben Tejada is now a Cardinal. And I think he got hurt today. Did he really? I don't know if it's serious. Zobris and his versatility, and not just the ability to play different positions, but to play them extremely well. A little difficulty getting out of the glove, but enough arm to win the race with Walker. Michael Conforto. Tejada's got a quad injury. Sounds like he'll start the year on the DL. It's a foul. Conforto had a two homer game in the World Series. Game four. He's 23 years old. 56 game debut in the regular season last year. A good looking young hitter. Smoke foul to left. 270, 335 on base, 506 slugging in 174 major league at bats last year. Went deep nine times. Product of Oregon State. Caught strike three. Seawald and Williams have been impressive here early. It's his first strikeout. Our first look at Ryan Williams. This is my first look at him. And kind of Kyle Hendricks like in his approach. Cabrera is a switch hitter. Signed as a free agent in December. Williams a bigger guy. He's 6'4, 220. Mr. Met with Twitter, Doc Gooden. It's a good call. Let me go, David Wright. Ernie made it easy for us, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then you get into the whole conversation. Well, what's your Mount Rushmore of Cubs? What's your Mount Rushmore of Mets? At the risk of offending somebody. Zobrist has been busy early. The Mets go down one, two, three. Two in the books from Vegas, scoreless.
Beautiful setting here in Las Vegas. Nothing, nothing. We've got Joe Madden with us for the top of the third. Joe, you ready to go? I think we're all ready. Absolutely. It was uh, it was a great camp. We got a lot accomplished. Come up here to Vegas for a couple nights and um, uh, you know continue the uh, getting everybody ready. But overall, I thought it was a great camp, and everybody's absolutely ready for opening day. How about this kid at, on the mound, Ryan Williams, who's at the plate? Currently. Like him, yeah. like him. I, mean, I thought he pitched really well for us. Uh, big guy, good angle, um, has some uh, really good movement on his pitches. A nice changeup. Uh, really, I, I like his makeup a lot when you talk to him conversationally. Um, I really get the sense that he thinks he's a big leaguer and that he belongs here. I really like when you get a young player that uh, kind of um, uh, portrays that kind of an attitude, not in a cocky way, just in a confident way. And I. I think you're going to see him up uh, at Wrigley uh, in the near future. Is it uh, fair to compare him to Kyle Hendricks in, in terms of his approach? Yeah, I, I think it is. I, I don't know the velocity on the gun. He might have a little bit more velocity. I think it looks like that way from the side. But overall, same approach, maybe better angle, taller, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, very similar in their approach. You're right. Uh, so a couple of days away from starting in earnest. Yes. Any concerns? Uh, no, honestly, not really, um, or not at all. I, the, the biggest thing has always been about good health. Every team's going to tell you the same thing uh, this time of the year. One of the, the edicts going into camp, I told the boys uh, to be well and to be ready by the end of this camp. Uh, I think we are. Um, you know, Jake, the little scare with the, the possible blister, but it's fine on his thumb. Um, overall, I think we're in pretty good stead. IPads in the dugout. I, I read your comments yesterday. I'm in. I, I'm in on yeah. you. What you said because you you you've done it one way and it's worked for you. Yeah. Um, is your understanding that they'll be in every dugout and whether you use it or not, it's just there in case? Yes, yeah, what I got. I mean, listen, I I'm not trying to denigrate because I'm all about computers and iPads and. Um, and I love my iPad. I use it a lot. I use it a lot for prep in the morning. I'll sit down in the hotel lobby and I'll, now they got the pencil for this thing. I'll write out all my notes and send in the lineup and I'll check out all the stuff PDF files are sent to me. My point is the speed of the game doesn't permit you to mess with a, a machine or a box and type and, and all that kind of stuff in the games. And I just, I, I have to see because I'm not sure yet where it can benefit us and me during the course of a game. I uh, like this little card in my hand right now and I don't even have it all filled out, but um, I'll get more information that I'll include on this card prior to the game. And and then Davey's got his stuff and Boz has got his stuff. Johnny and Ski's got their stuff and it's all there and it's accessible. So I actually think that a computer can slow down the process during the course of the game. Yeah, it, it, I'm fascinated at, at the whole idea of some managers who probably have no use for it at all. <laughs> they just don't want to do it. They feel like they're they're set. And I well, I mean, my point might is, be, yeah. Well, the thing is, it's it's not. I'm I'm all about them, but not. I don't think I need it there. Is my right, point. Right. And I'll find out. I mean, because I don't. You know, until you really um, get to see what it's capable of doing at that moment. There, I was even talking about. I'm reading about where the next level, obviously, is artificial intelligence. Where pretty much the these things they'll they'll think at the speed of you. Maybe you just ask it a question in the game and you could access it like that without having to manipulate it. It may have some substance eventually, but I just don't know. Uh, I got to see it. I got to feel it because um, I know how it benefits me and us prior to the game. I just don't know how it benefits you during the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would love, I'd love to see the conversation where an umpire is looking at you. Got, I, I'm going to set up a hitter in a minute, but I need my page to refresh. Right. <laughs> So I need to reboot. It's yeah, just not, yeah. it's not working properly <laughs> not right sure now. Who we're going to use. Exactly. I'm getting an interference from the other dugout. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Joe, always appreciate the time, and uh, we'll get it cranked up Monday night. All right, guys. Be well. Thanks, Thanks Joe right, Madden, bye -bye. the reigning manager of the year in the National League.
Saturday the Chicago Fire take the pitch once again watch them fight for their first win of the season they'll square off against the Philadelphia Union coverage starts Saturday at 3 30 on CSN Chicago. Thanks to Joe Madden for joining us. One thing I wanted to ask him we didn't get a chance to is uh, we had a quote the other day about he's trying to get really good at of doing nothing. Oh, you got to talk to me. <laughs> I could do a seminar. This is Kevin Plowecki. Ooh, that's off Ryan Williams, and that'll be a base hit. Wow, it was actually closer first than I thought it would be, and Williams really stung by that liner. Here comes Joe, here comes PJ Mainville. Time for Williams to react. It's a little bit of a hanging sinker, maybe a change up. It was a sinker, but it was up. And just on the outside of the right knee, perhaps. And you got a sense of it there. You hear the crack of the bat and then the sound of the ball hitting his leg. Well, you know, he'd like to continue. So I'll take a warm-up toss or two and see how it feels. Good to go. Joe's saying, are you sure? And he said, yep. Danny Muno will bat for Seawall. Switch hitting infielder. Strike called. Cahill is up in the Cubs bullpen. Muno had a. Well, he's had 28 plate appearances this spring. <laughs> 32 plate appearances with the big club last year at a buck 48. 277 here at AAA Las Vegas. Two. Right back to Williams. One, six, three, double play. The Super Bowl has got a lot of comebackers. First one got him. Second one, he turned into two outs. Mm. Revenge. He drifts a little bit towards first base with his finish, but that time it served him well. Hop right up into the midsection. Easy double play. It's Granderson. And he looks at a strike. Year, last year, previous year, his first year in the Met uniform, probably the worst year of his career. And when you do that at the age of 34, people start to talk about player in decline. But the bounce back year last year indicates that uh, he's still got plenty left in the tank. Cubs have played. 25 exhibition games in this ballpark. It's coming here in 1993. 
think we've been here every year since I've been doing this back to uh, 2005. Are you up or down, would you say? <laughs> or dead even? I'm even. Oh, that reminds me. It's not like Horshack there. Um, we did remember some, yeah. last year when we left yes. here, we were having a question about gambling. There was something that we was dropped on the air and we said we're going to come back to it a year when from we now. Come, when we come to Vegas, yeah. And you know, now like, we, we have to remember what that was. Did it have to do like Friday the 13th? It did. Yes. Whether it was more or less gambling? Yes. Something like that. Okay. Somebody will remember who's watching, right? <laughs> Scoreless. Auto Park. Las Vegas. Two games here and then off to Anaheim to get the uh, season started. Left-hander Jerry Blevins will face Chris Bryant. This is a tall matchup. Blevins a, a string bean left-hander, 6'6", six, six, buck 85. There's Mr. Bryant, Mike, Chris's dad. We uh, talked to Mike a lot during the season. Great ESPN, the magazine an article about their relationship. He has been uh, Chris's hitting coach since he picked up a bat. And Chris and uh, Bryce Harper received uh, keys to the city of Las Vegas. This past off season, all the cities we like to have keys to. This might be near the top of the list, right? Well, but, but you don't really need a key because <laughs> that's true. You never lock it up. It's always open. Robin's <laughs> a former Cub draft pick, 17th round, 2004. Well, he pitched seven times last year. Had a couple of freaky arm injuries. Got hit by a comebacker. Previous year he was a national and he had a 4.87 ERA and 64 appearances. I suspect they're going to use him primarily as a, a left-handed specialist. Bryant takes the walk. Uh, Brian get his arms extended, kept working that fastball in on the hands. Here's Rizzo. 
Pablo Sandoval will not be the Red Sox opening day third baseman. It will be Travis Shaw. So Sandoval will be a bench player. Yeah, it hasn't worked out real well, has it? No one Pablo hasn't. and the Red Sox. Andrew Miller has a right wrist fracture. It's his non throwing hand, and he. Going to try to pitch through it for the Yankees. Well, they're without Aroldis Chapman for the first 30 days of the season. And no one will fill in as the closer. And Trevor Bauer goes to the Indians bullpen. Two and two. Who's uh? Who's taking a spot in the rotation? It's going to be Kluber, Carrasco, Salazar. Cody Anderson, Josh Tomlin. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Brevins finds Rizzo for the first out. Big curveball here by Blevins. That's his best secondary pitch. He's not overpowering. He'll go 89 to 91 with the fastball. Curveball can be a real nice weapon for him. He puts his Rizzo out in front a little bit. Side ball one. Justin Verlander gave up a home run in a minor league game today to his younger brother Ben. How cool is that? I don't think he tried to give up a home run, but he did. Well, probably better to give up a home run to your brother than to walk him. If you walk him, he's just going to accuse you of right. ducking him. Strike to Schwarber, one and one. I think the curveball that Blevins threw Rizzo makes the fastball even more effective to Schwarber, right? Because if you're Schwarber, also hitting from the left side, you see that big slow hook. You have to respect that pitch and. In the back of your mind, sometimes it's tougher to pull the trigger on the heater. Good right playing between Duda and Walker on the right side. And the pitch. And the chase went out of the zone. And not real happy with himself. Well, Hawkins is going to be the lefty specialist. He's just dispatched two very dangerous left-handed hitters. Got Rizzo with the curveball. He got Schwarber to chase the high heat. Stella doubled in the second. He's playing third. Chris Bryant's in right. We've seen Chris in the outfield a little more frequently here recently with Javier Baez starting the year on the DL. Some other guys may need to have a bit more defensive flexibility than 
we anticipated going into spring training, at least early in April. And Zobris will be the backup shortstop. Just to get Tommy Lestella's bat in the line. Yeah, I think, you know, especially when you're up against guys with plus stuff, guys that can dominate a lineup, get a lot of swings and misses. Lestella's so quick, he's not real dangerous, but it's just tough to put away. Terry Collins will make a change here in the fourth inning. It's a bullpen day for the Mets. We'll take a break and be back with more scoreless from Vegas. Chase Bradford, the third Mets pitcher. Let's see what he did last year here with the Las Vegas 51s. And he's uh, from here. Fun for him. The Silverado High School and University of Central Florida. Two on, two down, Russell. Takes ball one. Bradford was a 35th round draft pick in 2011. 1,061 went before him. Down by Ploiecki. So when you sign a kid that late in the draft, you don't have high expectations, but he's knocking on the door of the big leagues here, pitching triple A and pitching fairly effectively. So the, the BCL is a great hitters league. To start the inning, Rizzo and Schwarber struck out. Lestella with a single. And now a 2 1 to Russell. Now three balls and a strike. See how aggressive Bradford is here on 3 1. Very. Russell didn't get it. Good swing. Three one heater, 90 miles an hour. Just pulled off it a little bit. Strike three to end the inning. 
argument for Madison. Up strand a couple. Round four coming up. Nothing, nothing. The bottom of the fourth, we remain scoreless. Trump spring Training Baseball is live with MLB.com at bat. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. New pitcher, new catcher, Trevor Cahill. Takes over on the mound, Tim Fedorovich. It was his battery mate, Christopher McGrone now in first for Rizzo. There he is. Oh, man. That is a serious-looking lefty. Yeah. How much does that card go for these days? Oh, boy. Eight cents. Did you pose specifically for the baseball card? Yeah, that's definitely a you know, pose. All one on David Wright. Ground ball toward right, and Zobis just can't get it. Looked like Ben was going to be able to track this one down. No, no, Looks like he may have overplayed it a little bit. <laughs> Infielders at the ready when Cahill's on the mound. Typically gets a lot of ground balls. up a lot of strikeouts pitching out of the bullpen for the Cubs last year you remember he was released by the Braves where he really struggled pitched a triple A with the Dodgers and then a handful of times with the Cubs before being called to the big leagues and he was very effective in 11 regular season appearances The double play ball. Yeah, he, did, he didn't play uh, in a couple of home run friendly parts for his home games last year, but terrorized pitching everywhere else. Uh, hooks this one foul. You see all the the cars he, uh, he drove to. Oh, I saw a little bit of that. Yeah, train. yeah he, he's got like six luxury cars. So, he did one per day. 
And in the last one, he said, oh, you're not going to believe this one. He rode a horse to work. By the way, uh, while living in Cuba, he never owned a car. He said, I walked or rode my bike. So. No problem with that. You got the money, you want to spend it that way, do it. Have fun with it. He's got an Alfa Romeo. Uh, tricked out the Ford F-250. Lamborghini. Bryant makes a catch. Right tags and heads to third. the season at Kansas City Sunday night. A match of last year's World Series. Two and one. Uh, five games, right? Kansas City one. Four and one, I yes. believe. Harvey and Volquez. We'll start that opener for those two clubs. That's a good start. Base hit to drive in the first run of the ball game as Wright will score. We'll do that big slugger, but that time just a little curvature to left to drive in a run. Zobris, who then got it to Cahill, so three to four to one. The entire Walker. Cahill, a guy Joe Madden will call on to pitch multiple innings. Entering the game in the middle, if a starter gets knocked out early, he can come in and he really give you some valuable innings. Take it unassisted, and that will end the end. Two hits and a run, and the Mets have the lead. It's one to nothing after four.
Well, great to be back in Las Vegas. This has become an annual rite of spring training for the Chicago Cubs. Julian Duga, the director of sports marketing at the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, is with us in the booth. Thanks for dialing up perfect weather for the weekend. Lynn, I can't believe it. If it had been last week when you were here, you'd have had 65 and 70 mile an hour. Run. So this has been great. Cannot complain a bit. Great crowd. Everyone's having a ball. Yeah, I heard 40 mile an hour winds the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it definitely cooperated. Well, Tim Fedorovich will lead it off. And he takes a strike from Chase Bradford. This is a great time of year to be in Las Vegas. You know, you, you can't beat the weather really at this time. I was kind of kidding about the wind. Swing and a miss. Um, What's going on here in Vegas? Yeah, uh, so I got a buddy who lives back in Phoenix. Um, he likes to play a little poker. <laughs> but he also likes his college basketball. He's a big Gonzaga guy. He was out here. You had the conference tournament out here. Now you do like three different conference tournaments, well, right? Well, actually, it's four. Four. We've got, we've got the Mountain West, the Pac-12, the WAC, uh, and the West Coast Conference. And uh, we've also got a huge NASCAR race that we have out here. Uh, and then you can't forget, you know, the, the basketball tournament season is, is in March. Uh, the Mint 400, which is a huge off-road uh, race and just all of the normal things that they ought to do here in Las Vegas. That is a fair ball into the left field corner for Fedorovich. And he's got a leadoff double. So the Cubs trailing one nothing have a managed scoring position with nobody out. No chance to draw even here in the top half of the fifth. <laughs> So restaurants, golf, casinos, go see Billy Idol. There's all kinds of stuff to do here. Oh, it's, you know, the, the town, um, when, when you sit down and really think about what we've got to offer from, from an entertainment standpoint of view, there isn't another place in the world that can compete with us. And then, you know, we bring an event like this into town. I mean, you, you can't beat it. Good bump by Chris Negron, barehanded play right. And he got him at first. What a play by David Wright. Might have been a replay review situation in the regular season, but we're still in spring training, so that will not happen. Yeah, David Wright with that bad back, uh, but when he's right, he can really play the position. That's just a good baseball play, too. Just a smart bunt. I mean, you've got a chance to get yourself a knock. If not, we move Fedorovich over to third base where he stands with just one out. And the Mets will bring their infield in. Against Ben Zobrist. And it's low for a ball. What other kinds of things can you do here in Las Vegas, Julian, that people might not be immediately aware of? Well, if you like nature, we've got some of the most fantastic opportunities uh, in the West. Got the Grand Canyons, we've got the Valley of Fire, um, other desert areas that, that are available. Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam. Uh, it's just it just goes on and on and on. And and, and I tell people, um, the Grand Canyon experience, if you've never done it, is definitely something you want to do. And then Valley of Fire. Uh, you know, I I, I I always tell people that is definitely something. Tell, I, don't, do. I don't know the Valley of Fire. What's, what's, what's that all about? Oh, it's, it's the lowest uh, spot in North America. Oh, really? And uh, it'll get up to 120, 125 uh, degrees. High ball game, Ben Zobris with an RBI single. That's one to one. Swing by Ben Zobris after grounding out to second base a couple of times. He lines this one into right field. So the Valley of Fire will put that on the bucket list. You bet. And I'll tell you, you know, if, if you like hiking, the Red Rock uh, area here is some of the best hiking in North America. We've uh, had folks from, from all over the world that come in to hike here. I mean, uh, and we, we tell people there's a lot more to do in Las Vegas than the normal things that people, you know, think that they're going to do here. Well, nobody knows because when people leave Vegas, 
Whatever happened here stays here. They don't tell. <laughs> See, that's the problem you have. As a marketing guy. You want people to tell you. Know, you. Whatever happens in Vegas, you need to tell people. Trust trust me, they're telling you. Word gets out. The word gets out, <laughs> yes. I, just, I don't know. I'm not a marketing guy. I just... So, you know, we've got advice. a couple of other little things. You know, the T-Mobile Center is open, a 20,000-seat arena. Uh, we've had several hotels that are about to announce that it's going to really, you know, add to our, our problem. Broken back bouncer, Duda with a diving stop, and the ball gets away from Bradford. And there's a little bounce. Sparkling play here by Lucas Duda, and the feed was good. Bradford just didn't hang on. Luckily for Duda, that bat was out away from him because he was not in a position to defend himself. But the feed was right there for Bradford. Maybe took his eye off the ball a little bit, trying to find the base. The error will go on the pitcher, Bradford. So the killers and yeah, that's going to be a, a, a pretty great weekend. You know, now I always remind people too. You know, we have 150,000 hotel rooms here in Las Vegas, so we are continuously coming up with new uh, ideas and things to offer folks to, to help us drive the, that market. And the Chicago market for us, you, you got to understand that it's one of our better markets. We love Chicago. Uh, we love the Cubs. I mean, I, I was just thinking, this is the 12th or 13th year that we've done this, and I've been at every one of these games. So, <laughs> and, and I'm, I can't wait to, to uh, come visit uh, Wrigley this year. You know, we got to get to Wrigley. Oh, this will be the year to do it. Yep. yep. The old one to Las Vegas native Chris Bryant. One ball and one strike. I'm a big hockey fan. There's still speculation Las Vegas could be part of NHL expansion. That would be phenomenal for our community. We think that that would really help bring us up, uh, you know, into the 21st century. Do you get, do you, uh, uh, does the NHL play exhibitions here? Do you have exhibitions? Not yet, because we haven't really had a facility for them. But now that we've got the new arena, I'm sure that we will see them. You know, we hosted the NBA All-Star Game here. Uh, back in 07 and it's one of the things that we were thinking that you know we didn't have an NBA team then uh, there's a possibility that we could host the the all-star games it's, it's, the platform here in Las Vegas is a wonderful place you know to, to hold a, you know an all-star game High ball game but the Cubs here have a great opportunity to grab the lead and they will and Brian will be safe it's an Two to one. Not a whole lot going on in this top half of the fifth. It's been a very solid contact. A misplay by Bradford. Here's a little slow roller that Bryant turns into a base hit. We talked about this a lot early last year. Chris Bryant, not just a slugger, a very good athlete who runs quite well. So the Cubs with two on the board this inning, and now it's Trevor Cahill who will likely try to bunt Bryant the second, and he bunts through strike one. And we should mention baseball. I mean, obviously, the Cubs, as you said, Julian, have been here a lot over the years. The Stars, the 51s, have made it a great AAA city. And this ballpark actually hosted back in the mid 90s, I believe, uh, some regular season games when the A's had to yes, play here. Yes, they, they, uh, I believe it was 12 or 13 games that they had here. Flip to the plate, it's safe there, no force. Here it's in, it's three to one. That's kind of the default play, not just for the Cubs, but for most teams. First and third, one out, your pitcher up there, the safety squeeze. In order, pretty bunt, good read by Hayward, and uh, exhale. I mean, just, <laughs> I hate to see the head first slide in spring training, and boy, into into home plate. It's always dicey, but playing the game. This has been a three-run interview, Julian. I know it's been great. Good. And, and speaking of the stadium, uh, we are extremely pleased with our facility here. You look at our field; they've done a great job of getting our field prepared. Uh, for this year's season. 
And quite honestly, we're, we're excited about the season. I mean, the, this town's a baseball town. So um, we're looking forward to the rest of this day and tomorrow. Well, the city has produced a lot of great baseball talent. Going back to Greg Maddox. We mentioned Bryce Harper, Chris Bryant, Joey Gallo. And should have a nice long major league career. I think so, yeah. He's, he's a good man. Speaking of Greg, Greg is doing pretty well on the golf circuit around town here. He's quite the golf. Known to show up uh, at the golf course every now and then. <laughs> heck of a guy. Heck of a guy. Yep. Two on, one out. Three runs in. If the, if the Cubs have grabbed the lead here in the fifth inning. in for strike two. Looks like the weather will cooperate tomorrow as well. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a great day. What's the, what's the capacity here? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, a little over 9,000, um, but we've got standing room today. I would say we've probably got 90, 9,500 folks in here tonight. Locked him up. Shadow left. Conforto makes the play two outs. Julian, thanks again for having yeah, us. It's been Wonderful great. Wonderful hospitality. You take great care of us yeah, here. Man. And uh, we hope take to be back man. here next spring yeah. as well. If uh, I have anything yeah. to do with it, you will be. Uh, <laughs> Big League Weekend. Make sure you come uh, to Wrigley. Uh, yeah, you bet. Julian Duda, the Director of Sports Marketing for the LVCBA in Las Vegas. Tommy Lestella two for two with a double. Tommy Lestella that reminds me a, a little bit of Paul Molitor. Obviously, Molitor was a right-handed hitter, and, and not exactly the same. But, but watch Lestella hit, and how quiet he is at the box. How quiet his hands are. See, he sets him back to begin with. So there's not a whole lot of movement to get into a low position. He's already kind of locked and loaded, and then he just throws the barrel at the ball. So that's a really good con. Talked to some hitting coaches in the past, and I couldn't hit my way out of a, a wet paper bag, but. So uh, they, they talk sometimes about a hitter has to know where his barrel is, to, you know, as he loads and his. Um, well, so Stella, he, he knows, right? Because he's not. There's no big hitch. He's not swirling the hands around. Could have remembered last year's our question. Yes, you were going to ask if gambling is down on Friday the 13th because we were here on Friday the 13th last year, and we were kind of thinking that people might gamble less on Friday the 13th. We'll ask him off the air. We'll try to remember for next year. <laughs> this will be a running bit. Because it would probably take a while to look that up. Three and two on Los Stella with Russell on deck. And that's a chase pitch for a lot of guys. But again, the quiet hands, the good approach, great knowledge of the strike zone. Allows him to wait just a little bit longer, less vulnerable to those breaking pitches, and move out of the zone. Easy play, Neil Walker, winning over. Cubs grab the lead. The go-ahead RBI coming from the hometown hero. It's 3-1.
Here Tuesday night Cubs and the Angels second game of a two game series pitching matchup John Lester and Andrew Heaney in a battle of lefties Cubs pregame live starts at 830 presented by Fields Auto Park on CSN plus one thing I read today that I found interesting baseball columnist Joe Sheehan made his postseason award picks and he did the who I think should win and who I think will win he says he thinks Garrett Richards this is a preseason pick mm -hmm. he's picking to be the best pitcher in the American League oh really wow. yeah he'll pitch game one against Jake yeah. Arrieta he doesn't think he will I think he's said David Price will Richards has a, a new changeup. A groan to Cahill, and they get Cabrera. Hey, the Cubs will host the 11th annual Race to Wrigley Charity Run presented by ATI Physical Therapy Saturday, April 23rd at Wrigley Field. The 5K course runs through the streets of the Lakeview neighborhood and concludes in the friendly confines. Cubs Charities will donate proceeds to support critical care needs for pediatric patients in Chicago through Advocate Children's Hospital. Sign up at racetowrigley.com. The Weckies from uh, Carmel, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis, where he grew up a huge Cub fan. Be the uh, backup. Purdue, right? Yeah. You play at Purdue. Be the backup to Travis Darno. Okay, Hill working in, in the bullpen for the Cubs last year saw an uptick in his velocity from his time as a starter with Atlanta, a couple miles an hour better. Along with it, he saw a spike in his strikeout rate. He's got a good sinker, good changeup. He just saw that get over curveball. Could be a good pitch for him. Kowecki so aboard. It's two for two. Trevor was an 18 game winner with the A's back in 2010. Travis Darno. And the dirt ball one. Lights are just starting to take effect. We near sundown in Las Vegas. Now it's start time, five o'clock. First pitch here, or shortly thereafter this afternoon. A lot of times that you, know, you worry about shadows, but it really wasn't that big of an issue. Went. That's Kerwin Danley making the call at first. To the breaking ball. Power 
12 home runs last year and 268 plate appearances. And it goes and that one hit foul. But just going through all the memories here in Las Vegas, you see in the background Henry Blanco. The one that still stands out to me was 05 or 06, final game of spring training, and he hit a blast to left. I think it was in the 10th inning, a walk off home run, and we immediately called him a Cactus League MVP. <laughs> Did you, you have a, a trophy? Itchy. Did you give him a, did you give him a flat screen TV to <laughs> honor his exploits? Yeah, you get uh, you get into the exhibition season, start rolling into extra innings. Um, <laughs> nobody's overly excited about that. And you remember the Cubs coaching staff? No grounds out. Galecki at second, two outs. Anderson has grounded out twice to the right side, but the third baseman has made the play both times. Estella, this time with the runner at second, Estella will stay to the left of the bag. And ball one on Curtis. Negro Strope is up. Anderson, a UIC product. I think the baseball field is named after him. Les Miller Field at Curtis Granderson Stadium. Side corner. Doug Eddings has been fairly liberal out yeah, there. He's opened it up a bit. Couldn't hold up. That's strike three. So Cahill, two innings of work, has allowed one run and has a three to one lead. Vegas. A lot of Cub fans, a lot of Met fans here this weekend. A rematch of last year's NLCS. 
And two teams who definitely feel like they're going to be playing for a lot in September and beyond in 2060. Eric Goodell, a right hander. Don't call him Eddie. That pitched well out of the Mets bullpen last year, 2.43 ERA. He's not on the uh, LCS roster. It's in the division series against the Dodgers. He goes 92 to 94 with the heater. Which is in a curveball and a split finger pitch. Swing and a miss by Addison Russell. Henry Mejia. Received a lifetime ban from the winner for his third positive drug test. Came out in February. Saves two seasons ago. Jairis Familia is their closer. Popped up on the short right, and it is Granderson for the out. You never know what you're going to get one year to the next with the bullpen, but the Mets have to feel pretty good about their chance. By its starting rotation, has a chance to be as good as anybody in the game. Defensively, I think they'll be good. Again, there was a Jekyll and Hyde kind of story for them last year. Really struggled in the first half before putting up big numbers after the break. Should get consistent play from Walker and Cabrera up the middle. In their first 97 games last year, they put up 3.4 runs per game as an offense. Their last 65, 5.4. Pretty stark contrast. Fourth in the majors and team ERA. We have some defensive questions. But that's where a big time strikeout staff helps. Yeah, you go in there for a three game series and you run into Harvey DeGrom and Syndergaard. Punch out 45 times. Here's a six man rotation. Times. Waiting on Zach Wheeler's return. He's coming back from uh, Tommy John surgery. Collins signed a three year deal back in the fall. He says that will be it for him. Three year deal or two year deal? I think three. Yeah, three sounds right. I think it's right here in there, little notes they put on it. He signed a two year contract. Okay, two. Two, so two, yeah, two. two and take it to the house is the plan for Terry Collins. Walks. Well, maybe down the road. 
think Cup fans like him right where he is. His current job. So many punchlines available, but I'm not going to say anything for fear of getting myself in deep trouble. Christopher Negron. Team running fastball. Number one and two. The grown signed with the Red Sox back in 06. Seventh round draft pick. Base hit. Federovich, former Red Sox draft pick as well. Oh, did not get to the big leagues until 2012. That's while he was a member of the Cincinnati Reds. Trip to the plate for Ben Zobrist. Knocked in a run and scored in the fifth. In terms of work habits and just kind of the way he carries himself, Ben Zobrist is too good to be true, isn't he? We, we heard all the stories from, from his manager, Joe Madden, back to his raise days. And, what we have observed here at spring training is exactly what he told us. Yeah, attention to detail. You just watch him. Even when the guys are out doing their morning stretch and their light running to get get started. I mean, he's, he does everything exactly the way he's told to do it. I was watching. You know, Tim Buss had him out doing some, you know the stretch warm up program and. They do one little series of sprints where they shuffle a couple, you know, shuffle steps like they're going to steal a base and then they break. You know, sometimes you see guys kind of going through the motions with that. Not, not Ben. Zobrist and Terry Collins wants to make sure his right fielder's all right, and it looks like he is. Well, you know, the wind that was blowing so strong early in the ball game has settled down a little bit. Other otherwise, I think this ball carries a little bit better than it did. Beautiful effort here by Granderson, had it in the glove but just could not hang on. Be it for Zobrist. Logan Watkins will run. Ball one on 
Soler. Who's your DH Monday night? Is it Tommy LaStella? The way he's swinging the bat, is it Jorge Soler? Um, I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't looked at my iPad yet and crunched all the numbers. <laughs> You've got righty Monday, the lefty Heaney Tuesday. So I think Jorge would get in there at least for game two. And we talked about Lestella's advanced approach against guys with really good stuff. So he would be a good fit, wouldn't he, against Richards? He's, he's making a good case these days to uh, find his way in that starting lineup. Yeah, and sometimes the guys like Lestella, they hurt their own cause because they're so good off the bench, too. They might not get some starts because it's so valuable to have that one guy that you can count on to give you a tough A-B against a you know, tough reliever. But and does the math change with the DH and being in an American League park a little bit? You get because the likelihood that you don't pinch hit. Good take three and two. Okay, I'll go with yes then. Okay. I'm sold. All right. I don't have any inside information. But just a just a hunch. Three, two, the base is loaded. Fedorovich ready to tag along with Negron. Cespedes makes the catch. Here's his throw. Better hurry. <laughs> He's safe. Cespedes has a cannon out there. Throws off line. Fedorovich in on a sacrifice fly. Yeah, I think the strategy for the Mets in the outfield is going to be any time there's a throw that needs to be made. If Cespedes is an option, let him get the ball. You see Granderson backing off there, allowing Cespedes to come and catch that ball, even though he was drifting away from the play. If that throws on line, they're going to get in the groan. Tough to make an accurate throw when you're Drifting in one direction, having to throw back the other way. Albert Elmora Jr. now. There's a lot of the regulars are coming out of the game. If you're not a regular, are you an irregular? <laughs> Don't you take umbrage? Hey, uh, let's get the irregulars in there. I was seeing Albert yesterday as he got on the airplane. He's he's bigger than I think a lot of people realize. Big strong kid. Pitches. Base hit will get you two. Ooh, curveball. Comes out to their lead. It's four to one in the six.
Tomorrow, the home stretch to the Stanley Cup playoffs continues. Blackhawks will match up with the JETS Jets, Jets, Jets as they try to make up some ground in the Central. Coverage starts at 6.30 with Chevy Blackhawks pregame live right here on CSN Chicago. Now we'll have to do it without Duncan Keith. Have they announced the suspension? I think they have. The suspension is, has been dubbed indefinite until uh, he has his hearing. So here's Pedro Strope. Well, he's had a very nice spring. He part of the Cubs bullpen last year. Strope, Fedorovich, the battery. Yassiel Balagert at first. Logan Watkins at second. Runanori Kawasaki is at short. Chris Negron now at third. Matt Caesar in left. Albert Almora in center. John Andrioli in right. Two and oh on right. Evelyn Collar is at the game. A uh, tweet from her nephew Mark. She's 93 years old and enjoying Cubs baseball here from Las Vegas. Call strike three. Oh, you asked Joe if he's ready. Are you ready? You feel like you're. Yeah, yeah, I think you're so. yep, yep, ready yep. to go I for opening night. Yep, I think. Uh, you know, as we've done these spring training games, we try to ease into it. Here we are in the bottom of the sixth. I think I've been able to minimize my. Uh, Purple gaffs. My scorecard looks fairly clean. I'm good to go. So you're giving us nine tonight. I'll be here for nine. Quick pitch. Let's put a scout under it. Really makes the grab. Two outs. Yeah, so the Cubs in the other spring is a little uh, uh, different for the Cubs. Obviously, they come here for these two games against the Mets. And Saturday's an off day, and then Sunday they play an exhibition game against the team they open the season with. So it's going to it's going to be kind of weird. Final few days. Two and out for Strope. Davy Martinez out to make the pitching change. Well, if you want to bet from Joe, or Joe just said, "How do you do it?" So change in the sixth. We'll be back.
Stone ready. 1 0 pitch on Lucas Studas, a strike. It's 1 and 1. A couple of rough outings. It's better as of late. Yeah, and so, so we've seen the way Joe has handled his bullpen here in the final stages of spring training, and this is what most managers do. You, you start to get ready to play the championship season, so you use guys the way you might during the regular year. Now it's earlier in the ball game than you'd see Rondo, but coming into this you know, two outs in the inning situation, gets a dangerous hitter. Blowing and going. Duda's got a double. Duda's showing some pretty good uh, batsmanship here tonight. He carved that base hit to left earlier, went down, got a, got a pitch in that at bat. This time it's a slider moving down and in. He just collapses his legs, makes a nice easy pass through the zone. Two out of three now for Duda. Walker has grounded out twice. Pitch is low. It'd be, tough. It'd be tough for Walker to leave Pittsburgh, his hometown. Big part of the success they've had there in recent years. Shot you will not see any time other than spring training, and that is uh, blue versus blue. Figure out who's on the other team by looking at the pants. Won the count. He'd be sitting dead red right here. He gets a hold of it, but it will be caught by Almora. To end the inning, Cubs lead the Mets after six, four to one.
Las Vegas. The Cubs are trying to extend the Mets' winless streak to 14 games. Payback. <laughs> Weird season yeah. series last year. Yeah, I was thinking about it. We went in New York there and we swept that four-game series. And the Mets scored one or two runs total in that series. I was at, and then in the, in the uh, LCS, they scored more than that in the first innings of those games. They scored in the first inning of every game of that LCS. But yeah, it was a weird year, and that's, that's the, I guess the beauty of this sport is how unpredictable it can be. Because I remember as we were walking out of City Field, saying to you and anybody else who would hear me, I said that team is done. And I remember the, the press, the post-game press conference on Sunday. Terry Collins was imploring his guys to, we've got to find a way to lighten up and have some fun. Um, Lucas Duda was threatened with his job. Caesar with a base hit. Jim Henderson, the new pitcher. Yeah, I remember that. You're right. I remember at some point Collins called in uh, Duda and said, "Look, man, <laughs> if you don't start to hit, I'm going to have to. You know, you're going to lose the abs." And, and shortly thereafter, Duda went off. They got Cespedes in the deal. Granders had a nice bounce back year. They got all those young stud pitchers. So it was a very nice story for uh, for the Mets last year. Nice story this spring, John Andreoli. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw. Not in time. That's Caesar with a stolen base. Remains to be seen how much playing time Matt Caesar is going to get, but he's going to break with the big league club, be on the roster. He's a guy who can. Come off the bench, steal a base for you, play all the outfield positions. Good, sound, fundamental ball player. Oh my, that would hit me right in the head. Coming right into our booth. Yeah. But it hit the tall backstop, thankfully. Gillespie next door was on the floor. We had to, he was down. They're calling the game. <laughs> and Cubs.com, they've got Caesar picked off. And no, that's the same play. Now, cue the Benny Hill music. Yeah, they got him. Kevin Danley, as the Mets looked at him, Said, is he out of the baseline? And he said, no, he's not yet. You've got three feet either way once you establish your lane. Let's see. There, there was a moment there where everybody paused, including Caesar. Is it, are we playing on here or am I out? Watch. He kind of gives a look. If it was a rodeo, it would have been a successful ride. I think he stayed in that rundown for eight seconds. Strike three on Andreoli. Well, all of a sudden, two outs. It's Kawasaki. How much money would it take to get you up on one of those bulls for three seconds? <laughs> Probably more than changes hands at the Mandalay Bay Casino every night. <laughs> Saki had a huge spring and just the, couldn't crack the roster. The numbers crunch. Maybe the highlight of the spring, right? Yeah, just everybody, everybody, yeah everybody was chanting his name there at Sloan Park the other day. Come through a little bat flip. He didn't realize, by the way, that he had done that. And, uh, but he never tries to show up a pitcher. Where do you stand on the, uh, the Jose Bautista bat flip? Are you okay with it? Well, let's just say that the whole bat flip in general issue, uh, the showing emotion on the field that, uh, as a sign of disrespect to your opponent. Uh, 
I'm kind of I prefer it didn't happen but I think it's just the way the game has evolved and we're probably gonna have to live with it it was a good nuanced answer yeah. you didn't go all goose on me no I mean it's I prefer you know I'm kind of old school in that I think I like it when there isn't a lot of that going on I get it if it's a big home run and a big moment to, to pump the fist show emotion same thing for a pitcher if he gets a big strikeout to get out of a jam right Granderson makes the catch on the warning track to end the inning Kawasaki hit it well stretch time 4 1 Cubs. Or autographed item and help benefit Cubs charities. Cubs Authentics is the premier outlet for all MLB authenticated Cubs memorabilia. Visit Cubs.com slash authentics to bid on weekly auction items and to pre-order game use bases and baseballs. The Cubs will donate net proceeds from the sale of Cubs Authentics items to Cubs charities. Stephen Veraxlis is on for the Cubs. Double A last year, just 14 games, 21 and a third innings. He was two and two with a 4.22 ERA. 21st round pick of the Cubs back in the 2012 draft. From New England, from Massachusetts, and then went to the University of Maine. The uh, Black Bears used to have a really good baseball program years ago. I'm not sure how they stack up these days. Uh, Billy Swift, remember Billy Swift, the right-hander? Oh yeah, he was a he was a main guy. Mike Bordick. That's right. Yeah, they. Uh, Mark Sweeney. Back in the day, they made. Uh, Two or three appearances, I believe, in the College World Series. Oh. One and two to Conforto. Is it a bad sign when your computer just keeps shutting down on its own? Yes. I mean, maybe you got a little problem. Raxel strikes out Conforto. Straight change and maybe a split finger pitch, but good dive bombing action on this one. Yeah. On 
Ansel Robles, who will sit out the first couple of games due to a suspension. In the lights, a high chopper. Uh, he couldn't find it. Yeah, I believe that's exactly what happened. He had a nice break on it and then just lost sight of it. <laughs> Big high hop right there. Got up into that bank of lights. Oh, Base hit for Cabrera. Not on my scorecard. You're giving him an error. Yeah. Okay. Alecki is two for two. Protecting Stevens ERA. I got you. Maybe he won't give up a run. Would you change it then? Back to a hit? No, then I'd be a hypocrite. Kawasaki, Watkins, Balgar. I can make it. Change to nine, huh? We go to the eight. Four one Cubs. Fans, show your team pride with Cubs checking and an official Cubs MasterCard debit card. Only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. It's like Times Square. Fremont Street. Here in Las Vegas. We might find a former Las Vegas star. Big lefty after the game. <laughs> There's a right-hander, Hansel Robles. I mentioned he missed the first two games of the season for throwing up and in on Cameron Rupp of the Phillies last September. And the Mets haven't made any other changes, so like the usual drill in spring training. The starters go five or six. Terry Collins may go all nine with his regular lineup, and then uh, tomorrow give these guys all a day off. We'll see. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I think some managers have that philosophy that before the regular season starts, they want, want their guys to play a, a full nine inning game. 
knows. Terry's probably taking a lot of heat back home in the newspapers. He's trying to get a W. CL Balligert. See what he did at South Bend last year in the Midwest League. One ball, one strike on him. In Wrigley Field on April 11th, 7:05, first pitch against the Reds. Fly ball deep left, back toward that high wall, and gone. A home run. Five to one. Oh, what a thrill for a young Yasiel Balaguer. A big moment for number 91 circling the bases after a towering home run. Fedorovich <laughs> go for ball one. Opening night tickets. Games, uh, the gates will open 30 minutes earlier than the usual two hour window from 435. Because of the new security procedures, metal detectors are at all of the gates now. If you want more information about the new screening process, you can hear uh, my voice. Cups.com slash security. It's a little video that uh, I explain yeah, yeah, what yeah. the new security procedures will uh, will look like. Fergie Jenkins, Ryan Sandberg, Billy Williams will throw out ceremonial first pitches and lead the seventh inning stretch. It'll be fun. Another ball cranked deep to left, and this one's caught right in the corner by Conforto. Rovich has hit a lot of balls hard this spring, including that one. Just didn't quite get enough of it to get it out of here, but a good swing nonetheless. And the groan with one away. Cubs will also wear a commemorative patch on their home uniforms this season. Because it is the 100th anniversary of the Cubs playing at Wrigley Field, 1960. So that patch will feature a version of the logo the Cubs wore in 1916. Budweiser bleacher bar. Really branded uh, parking lots. It's part of the uh, Cubs legacy partnership with Toyota. In the air. It's Granderson for up number two. And we're looking forward to getting a look at the new clubhouse. Yes, the old clubhouse is going to be batting cage. Yeah. Guys can get their hacks during the game to get loose. Yeah, other than the creature comforts. That you'll have with the new clubhouse. That's probably the most important thing where you can actually go back and 
and take BP during the game, get some swings in, as opposed to just hitting the ball off a tee. Watkins flies out. That'll end the inning. Yasiel Balaguer with a booming home run off Robles, and it's now five to one Cubs in the eighth. Cubs lead the Mets, and we're headed to the bottom of the eighth. Cub fans take the Cubs on the move. Fitness challenge. Cubs want to hear from kids ages seven to thirteen in the Chicago area. Tell us why fitness is important and how it is part of your daily life. Submit your entries at CubsOnTheMoveChallenge.com. Deadline's coming up. It's April fourth, so do it now for your chance to work out with Cub players. That'll be quite a thrill. Right-hander Justin Grimm against pinch hitter Alejandro De Aza. Bottom eight. Cubs lead five to one, and Grimm deals a strike. A little bumpy ride for Justin here in spring training. Against left handed hitting. That's one of the reasons why. Nasty curveball. Hey, he's got one of the better curveballs in the league. Reminds me of the old Joe, Joe Garagiola line. We just lost Joe here recently. Talking about Nolan Ryan back in the day. So Ryan was a lot better, but he got his curveball straightened out. Which makes perfect sense. Only if you yeah. read it one way. Yeah. Streak for the Cubs going back to Tuesday. Finishing strong. Probably still wouldn't qualify for the Cactus League NCAA tournament. Probably have to go to the Cactus League NIT. <laughs> so 
Granderson's going to get a heater. And he took it for a strike. Two down, both on punch outs. This will not be Arietta's first uh, career opening day start, but uh, his first as a Cub. So righty righty, lefty lefty, Monday, Tuesday. Deaza, Granderson, and Wright, and he strikes them all out. time here in Las Vegas as we always do a couple of days every spring oh, weird to think today's actually Thursday we got a night game tonight day game on a Friday tomorrow I think every day feels like a weekend here doesn't it yeah I don't know that there's much difference right in Las Vegas Monday and a Friday Addison Reed a right-hander Better right-hander, uh, along with the 279 uh, this spring for the Mets. Last year started the season in the Diamondback bullpen. Had some struggles. Pitched well for the Mets in 17 appearances. To the tune of a 1-1-7 ERA. And he'll be used as a setup man. Wilmer Flores now playing third. Deaza is in right. 
And Ryan Kalish takes a strike. He got it. Reed originally a third round pick of the White Sox in 2010. Grabs it. Two outs. Say 40 games for the Sox in 2013. Uh, 2014, he saved 32 of the Diamondbacks, but he lost seven games and he grew a number of saves that year as well. Was he traded to the Mets? Was he released? I don't remember how that went down last year. I don't think he was released. He was traded on August 30th. The two minor leaguers. One and one. Change of scenery can be a beautiful thing. Yep. Got a big piece of the uh, Poweki. Okay, how you doing now? Who you got? You got anybody left in your bracket? Yeah, I've got Villanova. That's ironic because the guy hitting went to Villanova. Did you know that? I think Plucky's okay. Let's go back and play. Ready, break. Gets Caesar to end the inning. We go to the last of the night. Looks like CJ Edwards, Carl Edwards Jr., will come on. Edwards Jr. Gonna look to get these final three outs with a four-run lead, and he's going to face some uh, 
middle of the order hitters too. Yeah, this would be fun for Carl. His numbers for the spring. The guy is so skinny, he has to wear a single digit number. <laughs> Started to make his major league debut last year. We'll begin the season in the minors. Could be a big part of this thing before it's all said and done. He's got a tough act to follow after uh, Justin Grimm punched out the side. Just electric stuff. Edwards, like Grimm, has a very good curveball. He's got a good heater. Over the top delivery. All the way. For strike one. Right over the top at 95 miles an hour. It's kind of that classic power pitching profile. An elevated fastball at 95, followed by a sharp down breaking curveball. Looks like I had a little cutting action on it, and he also has a change up. Assist as a result. And Duda. The last time the Mets won a game was St. Patrick's Day. His new bench coach uh, Dick Scout there on his left. I'm sure the answer is yes. Because baseball's a crazy game. Has a manager ever been fired by a wacky owner <laughs> after a 15 game? Losing streak in spring training. I'm sure it's happened, right? Back in the <laughs> well, 18 yeah, 90s yeah, or somewhere something. along the way, right? Um, and if not, then uh, it could provide, you know, if you got the the wrong guy <laughs> pushing the buttons, um, a real quick, you know, short leash in, in the regular season, right? If you get some of these volatile owners, if you have a really bad spring and you get off to a really bad start. Yeah. I mean, how, Yogi was fired by Steinbrenner 15 or 16 games in one year. Didn't Phil Garner? Phil Garner got whacked, I think, after six. Was that with uh, Detroit? Detroit? Yeah. That's insane. But, yep, it does happen. Yeah, the 2002 Detroit Tigers started 0 and 6. Duda is three for four. Might be part of your three star selection. Yeah, today. he's pinging the ball all over the place. And looks like uh, Rod Carew out there tonight. Single, double, single last three times up for Duda. And each time he's hit a good pitch. It's not like they're making mistakes. It's a good fastball down and away. A fine bit of hitting there by Duda. Oh, 
get ran the relay late. Nineteen eighty eight, the Baltimore Orioles made a change after an 0 and 6 start. Al Ripken Sr. replaced by Frank Robinson. And then they went oh for their next 15 <laughs> before they finally won their first game in their 22nd try. Ed Hardig is listening, our good friend, a Cubs historian. Uh, Phil Cavaretta was fired in spring training 1954. This will do it. Good so timing, Ed. Yeah. As look at that. Edwards works a scoreless ninth, and the Cubs beat the Mets. They'll go for the sweep tomorrow. And nice night for the, uh, the Cubs. Nine hits, five hits. The pitching was really good. And a tip of the cap to Ryan Williams, the minor leaguer, minor league pitcher of the year for the Cubs last year. He got the start here tonight. He was really good. Three innings, allowed just a couple of hits and no runs. The bullpen was solid. Justin Grimm, in particular, with that electric curveball striking out the side in his one inning of work. So that'll wrap things up when we greet you next year on CSN. It will be the regular season from California. Final score Cubs five, Mets one for JD and our entire CSN crew here in Las Vegas. I'm Len Casper. Thanks for watching Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.